out here in the back of the car. I was going over the car, making a list of things I need to get done. And I was looking inside of the field tank and had a whole bunch of little shavings. They got in there from, I don't know, dirt that was around here from by the fuel pump hanger and probably when I drilled the hanger itself. So I was going to siphon the tank out and try to clean it out in there. One thing I was able to do is with the suction of, while I was suctioning the gas tank, I was able to use it like a vacuum. You can see all that dirt inside of that line right there. So once it started picking up the fuel, hold up. I was able to use it like a vacuum and just start picking up stuff from the bottom of the gas tank. Should showed you guys before I used two nuts and some safety wire to keep the hose down at the bottom and from uh, curling up on me. So that stays in there now. But it's pretty cool. The Cressida has this uh, little square box that keeps gas in it even during acceleration. So if you look on the left side, there's a channel. Comes around. Yeah, it's hard to follow it. But it's pretty good at like anti-sloshing. But one little thing I got done. You can see some more of all that stuff that's coming up on that line that I got. So pay attention to this. Yeah, you might think, oh, I'll have a fuel filter, but let's say it gets past your fuel filter, then it goes in your fuel injector, it gets stuck in there, and it gets stuck open or closed, and then you're blowing a motor on something simple you could have taken care of beforehand. Just, <clears throat> just got this hose out, and you can really see how much dirt was inside of that gas tank. If I can get this to focus. Not even all of it, but when you really get a look at it, you realize pay attention to the small stuff. Small stuff will kill the big stuff. Had to run out of the house here real quick. I was looking at the car, making a list of things I want to get done on it. And one thing I noticed that I need to get done is I need to tighten the front crank pulley. I was going to pull the engine out to put a uh, impact gun on it. And that was really the only reason I was gonna pull the motor out because there's no room in there with the AC condenser. And then I run on, went on Craigslist. Well, actually first I called a couple friends. I was like, hey, you have any torque wrenches? They go to 240 foot pounds and nobody had one. So I go on Craigslist and I found one. Some guy was selling one for, I don't know, 60 bucks. I beat him down to 40. So I drove down south, picked this up. So I'm gonna get this in front of the car. Bolt that down, well, nope. I'm not going to be able to bolt it down because the car is not on the ground, drive shaft's not in, tranny's not in, so I'm not going to be able to tighten it. But I know I have the torque wrench for it, and I know I'm going to use it twice. So I'm going to tighten this down now, but I'm also going to upgrade the front front crank pulley once I come around on a deal on one. But at least I got this, and I'm going to use it a couple of times. And next step. Now that I know I'm not going to be pulling the motor out, since I, I'm going to be able to tighten this, with the uh, torque wrench I just got. I think I'm gonna go ahead, drop the tranny some, or some, I'm gonna drop the tranny and start working on getting the flywheel and clutch assembly in. And see what I can get done on that. So I was laying under the car, I was checking out the transmission and I noticed <clears throat> when it's more realistically placed and lined up with the way the engine's gonna sit, there's still a couple spots where it's hitting the tranny tunnel. So I'm gonna go ahead and bang those out and then get started on taking the flex plate off, getting the flywheel on, and clutch on. I just crawled under the car and I went the way it started on removing the flex plate, but I don't have an impact socket for that. I would use a normal one, but the last thing I want is to break one of my normal ones and then I have to buy a normal one and then an impact one. So I just gotta run to the store real quick and I can continue on that. Went to my local hardware store. Got my impact socket, 
and got a couple other things in the mail. Let me open those up, see what I got real quick. All right, package number one, I got a new Dash 8 straight fitting because on the one I put on the uh, feed to go into the fuel filter just wasn't seating right. It went in like halfway, then it started getting pretty hard to uh, get the rest of it on. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that, and let's see what's in the other one. All right, so in the first one, I got some jaws. Really should have done this before I started working on the car. But I got some jaws to put into the vise right here. I'll see how those fit in a second. And that means that this one should... That means this one should be... And wrench. Can't go wrong. Now everything should go on smoothly. Should. Perfect. Hopefully you won't have any issues now. So I'll give that a go after I get uh, this flywheel and clutch on. That was a lot easier than expected. So flex plate off, and here's my clutch and flywheel that came with the uh, engine and training combo I bought. It's an ACT Heavy Duty Extreme, I forget whatever it's called. It's one of the top ones, 675 foot pounds of torque or something it's rated for, which is awesome. It's great. But, uh, get this off. And flywheel looks, man, you can see the few spots on it which aren't. All that. Same thing for the pressure plate. Yeah, uh, pressure plate isn't as bad. You can still see marks on it. Look, I get it. I wouldn't put this clutch and flywheel in to go make 800 horsepower. But like I keep saying, I just want to get the car running and driving. I'd rather drive 450 horsepower than be building 800 horsepower in the garage. So I'm gonna put this in for now, get the car running, and eventually this will be an upgrade. It's a project car, it's not a big deal to pull it in and take it all apart again. So, let me throw this in. All right, got the flex plate off, and one thing I wanted to do was re replace the pilot bearing, but I guess since this comes automatic, it doesn't have one? I don't know, whatever the case, there's not one in here. So, luckily, I had already planned to do that, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze this overnight. Well, uh, yeah. I'm going to freeze this so I can get in there lubed up, and that'll probably make it easier. On second thought, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take this bearing and freeze it just to make it a little bit easier for me. So I'll freeze it overnight, pull it out tomorrow morning, grease it real quick. I already figured out that a 23 millimeter fits around the bearing best. So in the morning I'll come out, pull it out, grease it, get a 23 millimeter, tap it into place, and that'll be that. So I'm just gonna keep moving along. All right, we got a problem. This fuel rail that I thought I fixed, or I ground down the tab on that throttle body, but for whatever reason, now that I have this fitting on the end of the fuel rail, it's not sitting right, it's pushing up on the fuel rail, I won't be able to bolt it down the way it is right now. So I need shorter top hats. So off to the computer to research top hats, I know nothing about them, I just need to find shorter ones. Alright, disregard anything I just said. I had the fuel rail, fuel rail on backwards. But there is still an issue. So that has to focus. 
I don't know if you can tell, but one of the edges for the O-ring into the fuel rail, it just happens to be pointing out right against the throttle body. You know, I tried to tighten it some so it would be a flat spot and it gives you a little bit more room, but it's not working. So I'm just going to have to shave down right next to that where that bolt goes through a little bit. That shouldn't be an issue. So we got the 90 degree comes off there. I can continue how I want to do this fuel system. Don't have to worry about top hats. So that's going to come down there. Let me put this light down. A little preview. I had this planned out earlier. But the plan is to put fuel rail right. I'm going to use this bracket that was there for, I forget what, something stock on the 7M. Put that there so you can see. And degree comes down, it'll swoop up. So I'm going to change this 45 degree for a 90 degree. I'm going to have to order that. And then straight down, and it'll follow the feed up. All And then a straight six going down, it'll follow the feed and go all the way back to the fuel tank to return there. So, got to order that. That's pretty much all I can get done tonight on the car. So, the garage is a little bit of a mess. Air compressor, fan, got tools all over here and stuff. All over the bench. A little word of advice. Whenever you're working on the car and you're finishing up at night, Take the time, finish a little bit early, and actually clean up your mess. Get your tools, clean the tools, put them, put them back in your uh, tool, drawer, tool drawer where they go. It'll be a lot easier next time you go to work on the car. You know exactly where everything is. And even if you don't, next time you go to grab a tool, even if you grab it, grab it barehanded or you know, fix something quick, you're going to have clean tools. They're going to be where you need them. So take that time and clean up at night after every project. All right, cleaned up a little bit. I know it's not 100%, but I do clean up enough where I get to fit this thing. Clean up a little bit in the bench. Floor, I always sweep. That's it. Ready to pass out, wake up in the morning, keep working on the car. All right, cleaned up the garage. Able to fit both cars inside. I always sweep the floor at night, or when I'm done, keeps it clean, come out in the morning, looks good. Got the bench cleaned up a bit, I got a little bit area, some areas to work. Vice I picked up on Craigslist a couple days ago, it came in handy because I was able to buy these, these mounts to fit the AN fittings and it helped it a lot. I only got to use it on one so far, but I need to finish the return system. That'll make everything a lot easier. So that's it for tonight. What is it, John? YouTube, comment, like this video if you like it. Watch some more if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just continue on.